Hello everyone! Thank you so much for checking out my channel. Requiem from the Darkness is a series that aired on October 3rd, 2003 and ran until December 26, 2003 and consisted of 13 episodes. The studio that produced the series is TMS Entertainment, who have also worked on other shows such as Megalobox, Detective Conan, and Relife. The series follows Yamamoka Momosuke, a young children's author. Tired of writing children's riddles, he sets forth to gather a hundred gruesome and terrifying tales. During his search, he meets three mysterious people called Anyu, who has supernatural powers. The series mostly focuses on these four characters as they travel from town to town, casting judgment on evil humans, spirits, and creatures. During his encounters with the three, the author begins to question his morality, and if what they are doing is truly justified. During this review, I'd like to touch on a few points which will hopefully help you decide if this show is worth watching or not. And, without further ado, let's begin. Momosuke. I'll be frank, I found Momosuke's character to be pretty annoying. He was the one who wanted to go on this journey in the first place to write the Hundred Tales. However, throughout the series he tries to impede the other three in doing their jobs. The series tries to set up the author as a human counter between the other three characters by constantly challenging them on their methods of punishing their targets. This can work in some situations, however, the villains in this series are so irredeemable it comes off as more frustrating. Yamamoka cries about their deeds, but continues to follow them or interact with them when they run into each other. This doesn't ruin his character necessarily, as he does help out, but his complaining did turn me off. Overall. I would say he was passable as a character, and if he cut back on the whining, he would improve by a lot. Ogin Ogin is the puppeteer of the group, and has the ability to manipulate her puppet in any way she likes. Playful and sarcastic, Ogin is the most distant from Momosuke in the beginning, often calling him a pervert because he walked in on her when she was taking a bath. During this series, she does warm up to Momosuke, and the two begin to develop an interest for each other. I did find this rushed and out of the blue. Ogin was cool, and was really the only one to call the author out on his bullshit when he began to complain. Without going into too many spoilers, just know that Ogin was once alive, and we do get to see how she died in a later episode. Overall, I really liked Ogin. She was playful, distant, and not afraid to protect those she believed deserved it. Nagamimi Nagamimi is a shapeshifter of the group and has the ability to change in the many figures, often impersonating other people. Nagamimi seems like the most calm out of the three, and is usually the one who tries to keep Momosuke from interfering with their plans. Like Ogin, we do get a bit of a backstory of when he was alive, however, it is a lot less in-depth than hers. I personally really liked Nagamimi. He was fun, and I really never knew what he was actually feeling, as even in the most dire of situations, he kept the same demeanor. Mariichi. Mariichi is the leader of the group. A spiritualist or trickster, Mariichi is the one who casts judgment on their target, sending them to the next world. Mariichi is also the one whom Momosuke interacts with the most in the beginning, usually warning the young author to stay away. Mariichi, in my opinion, was also the kindest character. When Momosuke would fuck up and cost them their job, Mariichi rarely showed anger. I believe that in the beginning, the reason Mariichi wanted the author to stay away is because he is in the living world, and can enjoy the perks of life. Mariichi makes it very clear that they live in two separate worlds, however, his warnings are usually ignored. Out of the three, I would like to know a bit more about his backstory, as it seems, there is a lot more to tell. Overall, most of the characters, except for Momosuke, were pretty fun, and enjoyable to watch. The art style of this show is certainly unique. I have never seen a style like this. Houses and buildings are crooked to add to the uncanny and eerie world. If I could describe it, I suppose I would call it beautifully depressing. There are not a lot of bright and uplifting colors in this show as it would not fit. The world looks like hell on earth, and it works. People are murdered without reason. This is truly a time where the strong dominated the weak. 
and we can see that just by the art style alone. The bleak designs really exaggerate the dystopia the show takes place in. The character designs are also very different from other shows. From a two-foot-tall goblin-like creature that Momosuke works for, to a giant monster-looking man with a hunger for horse meat. This also works incredibly well to show disturbing imagery. More than once my heart began to race with the visuals I was seeing. Especially episode 4. I don't want to spoil it, but please note it is a little disturbing. Overall, the art style is gorgeous. Different from most shows out there. I had a great time with this series. It's a mostly episodic show that follows our main characters arriving in the town, ridding the place of whatever evil resides there. However, with this type of formula, some episodes are better than others. For example, one of my favorites being an episode where we follow a caged man who is rumored to become a bloodthirsty creature at night. The man appears to be kind and sweet, with the looming notion of what he could potentially become kept me very interested. I had no clue what a tonic he looked like, and just by imagining what kind of grotesque creature this guy would turn into kept me very interested. But most of them are pretty entertaining. The different legends and foes were presented with throughout the series are not only cool but intriguing, and the duality of the author trying to finish the hundred tales and the Angu going after their targets all work pretty well for the most part. My only real gripe would be, I wish the show would spend one or two more episodes on the cases. I really wanted to explore some of the side characters a bit more as it would stretch out their arc and the emotional impacts would hit home a lot harder. But with only 13 episodes to work with, I understand not going this route. The voice acting is very well done. Yamamoka Momosuke is played by Grant George, who has played other characters such as Nav from Hunter x Hunter and Lancer from Fate Zero. Ogin is played by Karen Strassman, who has voiced Nina from Monster, and Colin from Code Geass. Nagamimi is played by Michael McConaughey... M Mike. Uh, he's played by Mike, who has voiced Charles de Britannia from Code Geass and Shin from Fist of the North Star, the movie. And finally, Mataichi is voiced by Steve Kramer, who has voiced Vizef from Hunter x Hunter and Dario Brando from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Each of the main cast did a great job with their characters, and I did not think any one of them was miscast. This is a challenge, as most episodes require a lot of emotion. The people are in a violent and dangerous world in Edo, Japan. Horrible things happen in this world, and I cannot think of very many characters who over or underacted during these intense moments. Overall, I would say the dub is very solid. Requiem from the Darkness was based off The Wicked and the Damned, A Hundred Tales of Karma, a series of short horror collections. There are seven volumes of the book series. TMS Entertainment was founded in 1946, but did not venture into animation until 1964, with its first project being a show called Big X, which ran for 59 episodes. Steve Kramer also served as voice director of Requiem from the Darkness. Requiem from the Darkness isn't for everyone. There is rape, incest, murder, and violence present throughout the series. And there are times where I did feel a bit uncomfortable. And that's why I enjoyed the show. Cinema is supposed to invoke emotions from its audience. I want to leave a series or film feeling something, whatever that may be. I do wish there were more shows like this. However, I think the genre is starting to die out. I can't think of too many shows that have recently come out that have not been afraid to take on the themes the show has done. The rating I'll give the show is an 8. It's not perfect, but it's a series I won't forget anytime soon, and will most likely watch again in a couple of years. <laughs>